Hello, this is Frank again and good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night wherever you are and this is another time to read the word of God. God bless you as you listen and as we read together. By reading and knowing the truth we will definitely be blessed. Take your Bibles out and then we can read them together and then see what God is saying. As I said, I'm a messenger and of course as I learn, as we talk about his precious word, I learn as well, as well as you learn. So that's very important now in our lives. As it is now, we're talking the commandments of God, remember? Yes. We talk about the Sabbath or the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath commandment, which is in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 20, you remember? And that's from verses 8 to 11. Now, if I can read it again, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. I want you to get it right there. It says, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Does it say my Sabbath? No. Does it say the Sabbath of another church? No. It doesn't belong to a pastor? No. The Sabbath belongs to the Creator. So, we must get our one right. Let's get it right and buried so that we don't argue about it. What the Sabbath belongs to. The Sabbath belongs to the Lord. Is that right? Yes. It's written. So let's take what's written to be true. And the truth will set us free. Definitely. So it says, The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And it's written here. Which one is the seventh day, if you can ask? Because God will not just say, rest on the seventh day and he doesn't even tell us which one it is. So if we go back to the book of Genesis uh, chapter 1 uh, verse 1 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We know about that. And then uh, on verse 5 he says and God called the, the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. He divided the light and the darkness and he called it um, day and night. And he says uh, it was evening and morning. He doesn't say it was morning and evening, no. No, does he say it was midnight, midnight, no. In the same way, day one, two, three, four, five, six, he says the same thing. He says from evening and morning. Verse 31 of Genesis 1 says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So you can see the pattern stays the same. The evening and the morning, according to the Bible. Now, let me take you to Genesis chapter 2, which says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Verse 3 says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had made, which God had made, uh, had created and made. So you can see that, this what I've read now, God blessed the seventh day, it's also in the law of God. And it also says here, he rested from all his work, that's what, that's what the Sabbath is all about, uh, which he had created and made. So you can see this part of the Bible, which is Genesis 2, it's actually the part which is also included in the law of God, which is the Sabbath law, which is law number uh, number 4. So you can see the relationship here between creation and the law of God. It's direct. 
God himself will tell us which day is the seventh day. He doesn't, I don't have to defend God, no. He, he, he will tell us. In other words, through reading, and we know the truth, and the truth will set us free. So, let me ask you, as you have known and have grown up, which day is the seventh day of the week? Which one? Yeah? Well, let's see what the Bible says. Because then we will know, and then we will know the truth. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Matthew 28, this story here, it talks about the time when Jesus Christ was um, killed on a Friday and was buried and it arose on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. But I want to read it with you anyway. Uh, verse 28, I mean, Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the spiritual, that's where Jesus Christ was buried. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And then Jesus Christ was not in the grave. That's the story. Resurrection. That's why I'm a Christian. Jesus Christ rose. Yeah. I am alive because of him and it makes me very happy. Let's now go back and check a comparison. Luke 23, verse 56. We just want to see and see the difference which one is the first day and which one is the last day. The last day is the Sabbath. Don't forget, the last day is day number 7. Luke 23, verse 56, it says, And they returned. These are the women who had gone to see the burial of Jesus Christ on a Friday. They followed and then they went to bury him and then they, they had to go back to their homes to prepare spices so they can preserve his body, you know, after he was, he, he was, he was killed. So they went back to their homes and prepared spices. That's the story. He says here, And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So when Jesus Christ was killed on a Friday, they went back to their homes prepared the spices but then they didn't go to the grave because it was a rest day it was Sabbath now uh, Luke 24 verse 1 just follow with me here it says now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning they came into the spiritual that's where Jesus Christ was buried bringing the spices which they had prepared and setting others with them and they found the stone rolled away, and uh, the body, and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So the sequence of events here is: Friday, killed Jesus Christ, buried. The women went back, prepared spices. They stayed home on Saturday. They didn't go back. It was it was the commandment? They were following the commandment which God had put at the beginning. And then on Sunday early morning, they went back to the grave so that they can put the spices on the body of Jesus Christ so it doesn't rot. They found that he wasn't there. He had reason. That's why I'm a Christian. That's why there is Easter. And at the end of the day, I'm alive because of that. The other messiahs, they call themselves. They are dead now, they're still dead. But my Messiah, Jesus Christ, he's arise and he's alive. And that's why I'm glad. And he's the one who makes things possible for me. And that's why as well, he gave the Sabbath law. The Sabbath law makes us to rest. Jesus Christ himself, he also rested because on Sabbath, he remained in the grave. He only rose on the first day. So, it's not just he tells us to rest. No, he rested himself in the grave on a Saturday, which is the Sabbath. So, let's learn from there. And let us be like Jesus resting on the Sabbath. We'll talk more about this, of course. And, of course, frankly, let's learn. Frankly, 
our talk. And God bless for now. Don't forget, the seventh day is not any other day. We don't choose. God, God doesn't say choose whichever day is the first and then the seventh you're going to pick yourself. No. God is a God of order. He tells us this is the first day and that's the last day. So, the last day of the week, which is the seventh day of the week, is Saturday and not Sunday as many people think. Of course, there's history about it. Things went wrong, people cheated, people tried to change things, but God does not change. Be blessed today and know that on the Sabbath, you'll be blessed as well. God bless you and keep reading. Have a good time.